Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Carl from UX Toast and today I just want to talk a little bit about uh, colours, gradients, colour palettes, you know, those kind of things. Um, as I recently redesigned the homepage of UXToast.com um, and colour was a big thing uh, that was in my head for this. So on this left here, um, you can, this is the old version, this is what it used to look like. Um, much darker gradient, uh, we've got like a kind of goldy gradient going on here. And this is the new version that's live right now um, that you'll see if you go to uxtoast.com as of today's date. Um, and you can see it's, uh, we've got a slightly different font going on here for the, um, for the title, but the main change that I, I really looked at was uh, the choice of colours. Um, the reason I wanted to do this is because I think the old version of UX Toast, this version over here, it just wasn't as friendly as I wanted it to be, it wasn't approachable. Um, whereas this version, um, you know, it just feels a little bit lighter, it just feels a little bit more uh, fun um, and it was just interesting to be able to play with colours and just think about colours um, so I just want to talk about a few things that I've learned um, whilst playing with uh, this new homepage design. Cool, so I'm going to go over here and um, the first thing I want to talk about is um, a little bit of the colour wheel, a bit, little bit of colour theory um, and a little bit about relationships between colours. So if I just duplicate this, I'm going to bring it over here. Um, the first thing uh, we'll talk about is, um, I'm sure you, you've potentially heard of this already, um, is known as uh, a complementary relationship. A complementary relationship literally just means um, opposite, one an opposite one another on the colour wheel. So I've got this yellow and it's opposite this kind of purpley blue over here. Um, and the reason I chose that example is because this is exactly what you know this kind of design was based on. You've got a, a blue and we've paired it up with the yellow. And the idea of complementary relationships is that you have this um, this kind of you know, harshness between them and they stand out against one another. Um, but I would warn against um, just using this purple, for example, on top of this um, yellow and just taking it as base, base value that it's going to have strong contrast. And I'm going to show you why. So if I just take this square here, I take the square, I'm going to bring up my uh, side panels. If I take, for example, this orange and I take this, uh, the complementary for this, which is this kind of tealy blue at the bottom. So these two are complementary um, to one another. Now if I go over here and do start and check my contrast, um, you can see I've got really low contrast. I'm failing uh, contrast requirements um, in order for this to be uh, accessible uh, when paired together. So um, just because they're opposite each other on the colour wheel in this sample doesn't mean you have strong contrast, but it means that you can start to pair these colours together. Um, and as long as you use them carefully, you can have some really strong designs, uh, really strong visual designs that will stand out nicely. Next thing I want to talk about um, is I have to take another one of these. Um, is known as split complementary, which is really similar, um, and it's something that I'll use every now and again. Um, so if I just Bring my pen tool again. If we start with this colour again, let's say this is the, the strong accent colour that I want to start with, maybe it's my brand colour. Um, right over here, again, this is this purpley uh, blue, that's my um, my complementary colour. Split complementary just means I'm going you know, slightly to either side of this. Um, so if I just bring up a box here, let me just make a quick gradient. This is an example of you know, potentially how you could use uh, a split complementary relationship. I just bring a, um, if you don't know what I did here, I've created a box and I've gone to fill up here. If you change solid to linear, that means I'm gonna have a linear gradient. So on one side of this, I'm gonna have one side of my split and on the other side of this, I'm gonna have the other side of the split. I've got a gradient going across and then the really obvious choice of color that sits on top of here would be this, uh, this, this complementary color over here. So that's an example of how you could use complementary and split complementary together. Uh, the next one I'll talk about really quickly is, uh, it's known as analogous, um, and it's not something I use too much myself, but it's, it's something that could be useful to you. Um, analogous just means next to each other on, on this colour wheel, so I could have this kind of green, this kind of limey green, and then this, maybe this, maybe this yellow. Um, you know, if I was just wanting to have like a nice gradient across, across this, if I just do this colour on one side, this colour on the other side, and I choose, you can see this limey green is kind of sitting there anyway, um, but if I just make, make, make it bigger, a, bit, uh, a bit more prominent, that, that's just an example of analogous. Um, as I say, I don't use that too much myself, um, but feel free to use it however you want. And finally, um, the, one I, the final thing I want to talk about is known as uh, triad. Uh, and I think triad, personally, is the, is the most interesting. Um, and it's uh, something I've learned quite a lot about, because at face value, triad is quite garish, it's quite strong, um, but uh, I'm going to show you some uh, tips and tricks that I've learned of how to use triad relationships. But let's talk about what a triad relationship is first. So if I take this red 
here. In fact, what I'll do, I'm just gonna draw a line here, roughly into the circle. So a triad just means that we've got 360 degree wheel. I'm at the top here. If I go one third of the way around, it's gonna do a 120 degree, oh, let me duplicate this one, sorry. And then I'll do it 120 degrees. So that is one third of the way around um, from of the color wheel. And now if I duplicate that again, I do that at 240, that's two thirds of the way around. I'll bring this over here quickly. We've got this kind of like Mercedes, um, Mercedes logo going on here. Um, that is what a triad relationship is. So I've got um, one at the top, one one third, and one uh, two thirds of the way around. And these colors together would uh, be a triad relationship. Now if I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and group these. Um, and in fact, what I'll do is I'll just quickly create three blocks. So I'll do one is this first color. This first color is this orange. This second color is this kind of uh, limey green color over here. And then this third color is this perfume thing. And you see these colors together. Um, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, that's fine. Um, my personal opinion on these colors is it's quite garish, quite strong. I don't know how I'd maybe use these colors. Um, but I think triad's a really nice um, starting point for a lot of color palettes. Um, and I'll show you about how to adjust them to get them just right. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna just rotate this round. Um, and we're gonna go into this red. So I've got this top one here is at this red, then I've got a yellow and blue. So there are our primary colors. So I'm just gonna quickly change that red. And then this second one is, um, oh sorry, this second one is meant to be this yellow now. Um, and this third one is this blue. Quickly just rearrange these, so we've got red, blue and yellow. So you're looking at this, maybe you're thinking, this is like a color palette for a primary school. It's you know, really basic, it's really, um, yeah, it, it's still quite garish. It's, it's not really um, refined. It doesn't look professional in my opinion. Um, but this was the starting point. If I just bring up over here, um, I'm gonna take a copy of this. This was the starting point. This triad relationship is the starting point for um, what you can see going on here. So I've got this blue sitting on the left side and it's fading over to this pink and pink is part of the red part of the uh, spectrum, red part of the color wheel. So it's literally just a, you know, it's a faded, pink is just a faded red. Um, and then yellow, which is this yellow you can see on top here. So you can see a triad relationship in this design, even if it's not necessarily these face value colors. But I'm gonna show you how you can go about taking a triad relationship and turning it into something much more beautiful. Um, so let me just quickly take a block here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this. So this is my gradient going on here. I've got four colors going across here. I'm gonna quickly take a screenshot of what's going on here because I'm gonna show you some patterns you can follow to try and make your triad relationship and some of your gradients within that um, you know, look a bit nicer. So here we can see, uh, this is the uh, screenshot I just took and this is my um, colors going across that, which is going across here. If I just put this next to each other. These are the colors going across. We start this dark blue, we go across this pinky color. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of um, patterns I, I like to follow, um, which are just nice starting points for really strong uh, strong gradients with a, a nice amount of contrast in them. So this is one of the patterns I follow. Let me just draw that again a bit neater. And then this is the other that I'll follow. So I'm just gonna draw an arrow there, an arrow there. Make this a little arrow uh, as well. So, what does this mean? So, this just means um, when I'm picking my colors going along this line, if I just quickly turn this into a linear again, put that on one side and put this on the other, and I turn this all into my brand blue just as a starting point. So, maybe in my uh, in my brand, for example, I want my brand blue to be quite central on design. So, I've chosen it as this uh, thing. If I go here, I'm going to put a couple more points. Just by clicking on this linear, I can choose a couple more points going along here. So I want my brand blue to be about here, so I'll leave that where it is. This, this next one, um, as you can see going on here, maybe if my brand blue, for example, is right here, maybe um, you know, a good example would be something around here. But if I take this very starting point, I want to go down. I want to be going darker over here. So I'll go somewhere, potentially maybe somewhere around here. I've got this dark fading into my brand blue. Then over here, I want uh, something going more towards here. As you can see, this color moving around. But I also want it to be moving along the color a little bit as well. So if I move color just a small amount, um, you don't want to be moving too much in terms of colors because um, things can get um, 
You want it to be quite subtle but noticeable. And because I'm playing with quite a large space here, I can play around with the colours a little bit more. So maybe I want the colour to be um, somewhere around here. And then this final colour, um, we want it to be even further along in terms of this saturation, going slightly, you know, we're losing a bit of that colour, we're, we're going a bit more towards the white. And we want to be moving even further along this spectrum over here. So if I move this even further, maybe towards this pinky colour, and then I go over here. And you can start to see how this, this uh, blue to red has turned into something maybe uh, a bit more usable, a bit more polished in my opinion. Um, and it's a bit more similar to what you can see going on over here. I'll just quickly do another example of that. So if I go over here, um, and this first colour, let's maybe start with, um, oh, I quite like that colour actually. Yeah, let's go for that. Um, first, I'm just gonna quickly change all of these to be the same colour. Just so we've got a starting point and we don't get confused with our old palette. Cool, so we have this starting point here. Maybe I'll just go a little bit further down. So I'm gonna try and follow this curve. So I'm gonna start down here and I'm gonna move up. And then on this color palette, I'm gonna move across on my colors. So my second color here, I want to be moving up and across a little bit. Yeah. Maybe a bit too strong, we'll play around with it a little bit later. Just move that color and copy it over. Yes, maybe we go a bit more towards the red and we're gonna go much further up. And then I'm gonna copy this color over into here. And then we go even further along in terms of the saturation. And maybe we're just poking out this other side here. I, I personally think that's, that's a really nice uh, a really nice gradient we've got going on here. One thing you could even do here, um, if you wanted to make it a bit more simple, we could take this last colour um, and we could remove it, spread these out a bit more, and maybe the text that sits on top could be this last colour, um, as an example. Um, but if I just take this colour um, for now, what I'm going to do, uh, if you might be looking at this and like, but what's another colour that would pair really well with this? So if I just take a block here and I'm move it up just above, I want maybe as I, I use my brand colour around this point, around like a third in. So maybe we just take this colour and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to this other colour wheel over here. And I think this is sitting, if I just take this all the way up for a second, okay yeah we're really obviously sitting somewhere around here in the colour spectrum but we're you know, a little bit less saturation, a little bit more black coming into that. But I'm just going to take that and I'm going to move it to the exact opposite side. And I'd say we're somewhere over, somewhere over here. Yeah, I'd say that's quite opposite. Cool, so I'm gonna take this color. And you're probably looking at this color and thinking, how is this color possibly gonna, um, gonna pair? Let me just take that color again. How's this color possibly gonna pair with this? So um, right now, that's looking you know, quite garish. That, that's looking really, um, not looking well thought out. If I just remove the saturation on it, it's just a small amount, um, actually quite a lot. I think that, personally, is quite an interesting colour palette that I could probably play around with. Um, so I'm going to take this, put it here, perfect. Potentially not to your taste. Um, my, my personal opinion is that's, that's an interesting colour palette and I, I could probably play around with that. You could probably create quite a, a strong brand using these, uh, you know, this purple to yellow and then we're using this green. So this is all just based off the triad relationship and then a complementary and just an accent on top of it. So that's a little bit about colour theory, colour wheel. Um, I just want to do some quick tips and tricks um, when you're choosing your gradients. Um, I'm just going to go over here and I've got some examples of gradients that I've played with in the past. Um, so first I'm going to start with uh, two colour gradients. So you might use a two colour gradient in you know, quite a small space. Um, if I if just quickly make a frame here, and we love buttons, so this will be a button. Water layout, we'll have this at 32 around each side. A bit of cool, we've got a button. Um, if you wanted to use a, a gradient on, on your button, the first question I'd ask you is, do you need a gradient on your button? Like, is this for you? Is this gonna help the user? Or is this just because you think it's nice? Um, there's not necessarily anything wrong with using a gradient on a button, but ask yourself, is it actually doing any good? Um, but for this example, let's say you decide you do. And we're gonna change this to a linear. One side of this over here, and one side of this over here. Um, buttons are small spaces, so I wouldn't play with more than um, more than one colour, personally. Um, if, oh, more than two colours, sorry. So if I was going to quickly just choose a um, colour over here, and I'm going to take this colour over here. My, my opinion for two colour gradients is, you know, be subtle. Don't, don't go too much. We don't want to go all the way over here. We don't want to go all the way over here. It's just too much. There's too much going on. If I go back to where we were, Maybe a small change over here, moving towards 
maybe this blue, maybe a little bit of saturation. Um, you know, maybe that's something that you'd like to work with. My, my, uh, my takeaway from when playing with two colours and play when playing with really small spaces is you know, be subtle with it. Small changes to saturation, small changes to, uh, to the, the actual colour itself. And finally, I'll talk really quickly about complex gradients. So complex gradients, and you can see these uh, three examples down here. Um, this is the complex gradient that I will use on, um, on uxtoes.com and we've got this dark purple and I've shown you how we go from this dark blue into this, uh, into this pink. But you can also see some other things going on here. I've got a little shape here, if I just show you what's going on. Uh, in Figma, I've got a uh, shape and I've applied a layer blur to it. Just quickly what, what's going on there. If you use the pen tool, you can quickly just create any shape you want. Um, in this example, I've got uh, a wave, and I've done that by using uh, border radiuses on the on these top points. And I've applied to it a, a fill to it, a linear contrast, a, a linear gradient. And then over here, when you press FX, if you plus, it will automatically go to drop shadow. You can change that to layer blur here. I can't choose layer blur because I've got one applied. So if I just get rid of that. And I'll bring this back. And I've set this at about 200. Um, so that is means it's just fading into the background quite nicely, and it means you can create these interesting shapes. So I've got this blue, blue part of the spectrum over here, but applying that light blue near this light pink, I, I think it just makes the, a bit more, a uh, bit more dimension to this, to this gradient. Um, and my personal opinion, I quite, I quite like how that's come out. Another thing I've done here is I've applied a radial gradient. So I'll quickly just show you what's going on with the radial gradient. Um, uh, when you are choosing your gradient, as we said, we've got linear, we've got a few others, and play around with these. Find the ones that you think that, um, you're going to use the most. Uh, but radial just means like a circle gradient. It's going to start strong in the middle and it will go uh, more faded towards the edge. So if I just bring this up to 100 to show you uh, a bit more, obviously, what's going on. That's my radial gradient. I've got it just sat off the top of the screen there. And you can see that, that little ball going on there. Um, and all I've done is made it white on one side, made it a much uh, completely faded white on the other side, and I just brought the contrast down. It's a very subtle change, um, but again, it just adds you know, another interesting bit of uh, dimension to that colour. Cool, so that's it for today's episode. I really hope you've learned something. If you found it useful, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, or subscribe to the channel, as it really does help. And I hope to see you again soon.